Hello, everybody. We have Angela with us today, and I'm super excited that she is here. She has an organization podcast, which is why I found her, but she's and it's for special needs mamas, which I feel like we're kind of soulmates in a way because everything about that just speaks my love languages. And so I thought we'd have her on and she could just share with us some great organizing tips and ways that we can make our homes more peaceful, not only for our people, but also for us as special needs mamas. So Angela, introduce yourself, tell us about your family and your your business and everything about you that makes you so wonderful. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, so yeah, I've been married for 26 years uh, to the love of my life and we have two children and I was in marketing and in corporate America before my kids were born. Uh, but then my son was born and I wanted to stay home with him. Uh, he's a junior in college now, which is hard to believe. And then two years later, my daughter was born and she was born without with Down syndrome. She, uh, we were not aware of the diagnosis. We were pretty surprised and we were, I think, speaking for myself, not necessarily for my husband, but I was really fearful and I was scared because I was very unfamiliar with what it was like to live with Down syndrome. I didn't know anyone with Down syndrome. I didn't have any perspective. And I was really fearful of what our lives were going to be like, what her life was going to be like, what, how it was going to affect her brother. And so I definitely spent a few months um, kind of trying to work through my grief and understand things better. And it took me some time, I will say. This was back in 2003, so we didn't quite have all the resources available then that we do now. Um, but uh, she has been nothing but a gift to us uh, for the last 19 and a half years. And um, our life is kind of nothing like what we thought it would be actually. Because of her, we decided to move to Dallas a year later to be closer to family. And my husband told his employer, hey, I'm gonna move to Dallas hope you're okay with it and they were fortunately and since then um, we've lived here in dallas for i guess 18 years or so uh, we i think the people that we have met have been a, a lot due to her actually because of her um, uniqueness we have traveled a little bit of a different path but we have just been so blessed with um, all the people that we've met, the experiences that we've had that I don't think we would have had or that we would have pursued had she not been born with Down syndrome. And while I was a stay at home mom, most of that time in about 2015, 16, she transferred to um, a school here in Dallas called the Notre Dame School. And my son was getting ready to attend a different high school. And so we moved and um, we left the community that we'd been living in for 11 years. And everybody was doing great with the move, except for me. I had kind of lost my community a little bit and I was feeling a little, a little like looking ahead, like my son was in high school now, what's gonna happen to me? Where, what are, what do I wanna do? And where's all this going? And so I, um, a friend of mine introduced me to the Enneagram and I started diving into that. And I will credit the Enneagram, even though it is just a tool, it's a personality framework tool, but it really helped me figure out that I needed to work on figuring out what I wanted and what my needs were and what my interests were. And it's taken about five to six years, but I finally figured out that I really like organizing and I really like um, setting up systems for myself and my family. That's how uh, I think it that helped me cope when she, when I was you know struggling with uh, the early years. And um, I really I love helping people. And so I just started organizing on a whim, and um, that has led to doing you know I started doing some presentations. I also got certified to teach in the Enneagram, and so. Um, I was doing some presentations on the Enneagram and I ended up um, working with and presenting to a group of moms of kids with Down syndrome and it hit me this was back in January and it just hit me that this is who I need to help this is who I need to, you know, work with because we as as I'm sure you know, we have a lot more overwhelm 
and a lot less time. And those are two of like what I like to call clutter pitfalls. Um, and they that that creates a lot more stress for us and a lot more clutter in our homes. And and we're susceptible to that because of our kids' needs. And so I I just thought I need to start figuring out a way to help these people more. And so that's why I started the podcast a couple months ago. So and here I am. I love all of that so much. I have so many follow-up questions. I'm curious, like looking back in that that grief phase of just those first few months after your daughter was born, what, if somebody's kind of there right now, what would you say to them? Like kind of first steps, like what, what encouraging words would you have for them? I would first say to breathe, love your child, and it's going to be okay. It really truly is because for me, the, the fear of the unknown was the most crippling part of all of that. If I had known what I know now, I would not have been so teary. I would not have been scared. There have been so many amazing things that have come from us experiencing the gift of our, of our daughter. For instance, my husband met his business partner through special olympics because they have a daughter at the same school as our daughter and who has down syndrome just like casey and now they are business partners he wouldn't have met him and be doing what he's doing if it had not been for our daughter we would not have moved to dallas to be closer to my family we would not have met the people that we have met that i cannot imagine not having them in our lives and so i think we just have to be open-minded we have to it's not going to be easy raising kids is not easy (laughs) raising any child is not easy and so i think just take a breath and um take one day at a time and you you will rise to the challenge and you will have you will experience joys that you never thought that you could experience i love that okay so after you kind of got to a space where you were trying to figure things out and you dove into the enneagram And you're learning all about yourself, which I love, because I think so often we get lost in the shuffle as mamas. And it it is kind of like a moment of like, oh, crap, what happened here? Right. (laughs) That's exactly what I went through. Yeah. 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 So what, how did you kind of dive into the piece of organizing? Like, how did you discover that for yourself? Well, I, so one of the things about the Enneagram and specifically my personality type, I am what's called a peacemaker. I like to make sure there's no conflict around. I like to keep the peace. And sometimes that means sacrificing our own needs and wants. And when I realized, when I started learning about the Enneagram and realized that about myself and realized how much I had done a lot of that over the years, I really started taking stock in what were the things that I wanted to do something more than what I was doing. I wanted to I wanted to be something more than just my kid's mom, to be quite honest. Not that I don't love that identity, Absolutely. right? Yeah. And I love being an advocate for the Down syndrome community, but there was just something more that I felt like I was missing and that I could contribute, but I wasn't quite sure what that was. And I kind of felt like a jack of all trades, like I didn't have any like specific skills. Cause I do think they talk about nines. We have these skills that aren't necessarily cherished in our society. Like we're not the biggest go-getters we're great mediators and we can, we're very good people, people, pleasers and people, people, um, people, persons. Does that make sense? (laughs) (laughs) Getting tongue tied. Yeah. But, um, we, uh, I think we process the things a little bit slower, but we take a lot, we're very empathetic and we take a lot in. And, um, so I had to really, do a deep dive into myself and say, well, what do I want? What do I like to do? And I honestly started making a list. Isn't that sad? But I was like, what are the things that I really like really spark my interest? Well, one was the Enneagram. The other was um, actually being an advocate in the Down syndrome community. I I volunteer at the children's clinic, at the Down syndrome clinic at children's hospital. So I love that. And I also really love to organize. Like, that's what I like to do in my spare time. Like, if some people like to cook, I like to organize a drawer. (laughs) And I've loved that all my life. And it has kept me sane and kept me 
calm and kept me regulated. And so I, I just kind of had an epiphany one day. I was at a friend's house and we were, she was, it was, um, we were kind of on a trip and I could have been at the beach, but instead I, I wanted to be organizing her pantry. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> maybe I'm onto something here. And that's what I just started. I did it for a couple friends just to start out. And that's how it, that's how it got going. Yeah. I love that. So you go into people's homes and help them organize. I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And then let, can we kind of switch gears here? Cause I would love to just speak about how I know for me, kind of what you're saying of like having those systems and having that organization in place, it is so life-giving to me because I feel like things are under control here. So when my kiddo is out of control, which happens often at our house, I'm in a space where I feel like I can address that and be present with that. And that's, you know, that's not always the case. I don't always show up perfectly to anything because nobody does. No one does, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but I do find that like when things are under control in the home, I'm less of a mess and I feel less stressed, right? So 100%. what are some, what are some things that you have noticed as you help moms that help them kind of just bring it down a few notches in their home? Well, my first thought is that I actually, I do try to use the Enneagram when I'm working with clients. So I know enough about all of the types that I can get an idea of their personality and get an idea of what they, what, what their needs might be or what their motivations are, because that's what the Enneagram is based on. It's based on their motivations and not on our behaviors. So I try to use that. And for example, if there is um, someone who's the personality type of say the helper, they're always thinking of everyone else, right? They, I want to give them some peace and calm in a space that's their, that is their own. So I might suggest, unless they have a really hot spot that I like to call, like where it just, they walk into a room and it gives them so much stress that we have to address that first. That might be the laundry room. It might be the very first, it might be the entryway. It might be the kitchen. But I also like for someone like the helper, I would want to maybe work on their closet. And so that when they walk into their closet, it's just theirs and it feels peaceful and it feels the way they want to feel. I want to evoke those kinds of emotions and I want them when they walk into that space to feel that calm and that peace and that to give them a little bit of that sense of control when other things are out of control. Mm, that speaks to me. I, <laughs> I'm a, it depends on what day I take the Enneagram, which is kind of entertaining, but I'm like two with a three wing or three with a two wing. And so, oh, interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. I know, I've taken it so many times and every time it's different and I don't, I don't know what that means, but well, we can oh, chat cool. about that offline. I would be happy okay. to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I'm like, that speaks to me so much of like having a space that I can go into that. I'm like, this is mine. No kid stuff allowed. This is exactly. me right here. Yes. Um, yes. And having like a candle lit and things just right. all my things, things right there, having my yeah. systems in place there has brought me so much life. And it is, it's astounding to me. And so I, I would love to just encourage mamas just apart from the Enneagram, if, if you don't know your Enneagram number, if you don't know, you don't have the expertise behind it, creating a space that's just yours. Even if it's a little, your junk drawer that you open up and it's organized and you can open it during the day and look at how beautiful it is. Mm -hmm. Like if that brings you peace, make that happen. Spend the extra hour on it one day this week and get the tools that you need to make that happen and get that in place so you can take a deep breath when you go in there. That's right. And it can be literally as small as a corner or a drawer or a shelf, like just something because we all have to start somewhere. And if we can see that and feel what we want to feel from that, then that gives us a little bit more motivation to keep going in terms of, you know, working on other spaces when we have the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you were to, you know, obviously you're talking to mamas right now, and they're feeling like I'm a hot mess. And I mean, apart we from- We often felt like that at some time, yeah. <laughs> apart from Brene saying like, we're not, you're not a hot mess. Maybe the situation is a hot mess. So maybe you're right. living in a hot mess and um, you feel like my kids are out of control. Our house is a mess all the time. I don't even know where to start. Kind of what's your first go-to of this is where we're going to start? Well, 
there's definitely different paths you can take. You could take the physical path, which is the first step. I would be honestly, you grab a trash bag and you start to pull things out that you don't need. The less that you have, the the calmer and the better off you are going to feel. And that comes from years of I was in the accumulation stage, you know, when you have littles, like you're accumulating a lot of stuff. And I thought, and then, and then I would, you know, stop at home goods and find a cute little candle and a little accessory and things that I would fill up my shelves with. And now that I have, I, I, I've obviously moved beyond that time in my life, but I have become so much more of a less is more kind of person because I when I see the negative space and the le- the fewer things that I have to work on clean maintain all of those things I just feel calmer and and better and a lot of times I will be honest I will come home from an organizing session and I'll be like I need to remove more things in my home because I see the stress that yeah. a lot of those things create and um I think, I think at first it can be hard to get your mind wrapped around it. And that's the second piece, the, um, the mental part, the, the mindset work that has to be done to get past the, to, to break through, to be okay with letting go of some of those items that you, you think you need to hang on to for whatever reason. Um, so it's, it's really, it's two parts, but the first easiest thing I tell people, grab a trash bag and pick up five things in five minutes and be done with it and take it out to the car, take it out to the trash. It's it's already been used, it's already been spent, you've already bought the money. If it is no longer used to you, it's it's okay to put it in the trash or recycle. It's it's okay to let it go. And just start there. And um, you know, and just slowly like see if you could do that tomorrow and see if you could do that the next day. And then keep going. Like that's a lovely challenge. A little bit <laughs> eliminating because it's hard to start organizing when you have so much stuff, but once you can rid yourself of all that stuff, then it's easier to figure out what you have and what the use for it is and all of those things. Right. Right. And I, I do think some people do need what we call an accountability buddy. We need, we need maybe permission from someone else to let things go. Right. And so you, that can be a friend. It doesn't have to be a professional organizer. That can be a friend. It can be a spouse. It can be, you know, whoever, but, um, I do think that we have to, we, we have to work on that mindset part, but if you could just start with the easy stuff, you know, start with the trash, start with the duplicates, start with the, the things that are broken, you know, those things and, um, just take it one day at a time. I love that. Have you seen a big difference in, in your kiddos and also other families and their kids and just how it affects their mood and kind of how they play with things and interact with things? So I would say it's certainly in my own family. Yes. Um, in my clients' families, I haven't, I've, I've worked with a few kids, but I, a lot of times I'm working with the mom. Um, and so I see the change in the mom. I don't, I don't necessarily, you know, am there to see when the kids come home and see that change because we might not be working on the kids area. We might be working on the kitchen, right. Or the laundry room. So the kids don't care about that stuff. (laughs) It's the mom, right. (laughs) That wants those, those places organized and peaceful and calm and, and set up the way that they need it set up. But in my own home, as far as my kids go, my daughter is, is very, um, she's very visual and she's very routine based and she needs to know what's going to happen ahead of time so that that just helps her process and helps her stay regulated basically. And so we have had to set up things in her room and in the house so that she's just aware of what's happening. So for instance, we are really big calendar people. I have a dry erase monthly calendar in her room and like clockwork, the first day of the month, she comes down with her dry erase markers and we go through the entire calendar of the month. What's happening. We talk about every event, whether it's a doctor's appointments or karate or how, and it's, we practice our calendar skills, how many days in the month of May, that kind of thing. And, um, 
it's a bonding time for us. And it's also a time for her to start, start, you know, processing. And she, when I wake her up in the morning, which I should be working on getting her wake up herself, but, (laughs) um, she always says to me like today, they had a, they had a day of volunteering where they were going off and doing some volunteer work at other, at other places this morning. And, she was all excited about it. And that was the first thing that came into her head and we, cause it was written on the calendar and she knew what was happening. And so um, it's been really helpful for her to have that um, understanding of what's happening ahead of time. And when we're traveling, we will either bring that calendar with us. If we're um, when we go away for the summer, we go away for about five weeks, we'll bring the calendar with us and show it and, and bring the markers and everything. If it's just a few days, we might just write it on a piece of paper and leave it in the back seat so that she knows because otherwise she would ask us a lot of questions <laughs> about what's ahead. <laughs> and so that saves us some headaches and just her peace of mind. Yeah. I really love that idea of bringing your kiddos in on that process because I have one that's very particular about the days and what's happening that day and all the events and it does breed a lot of questions and so I'm like that's really smart to bring him in on it and talk about each thing and show him where it is on the calendar and yeah yeah she really it really speaks to her now I will say I I shared that tip with a, a group of moms that I was presenting to and one mom went home got the dry erase calendar set it up in his room, talked to him about it and everything. And he, her child has Down syndrome. She came back 30 minutes later and he had erased everything. <laughs> so he was not quite ready to experience the calendar. <laughs> so we got a laugh about that. I was like, well, maybe we need a little something more permanent. Yeah. <laughs> Besides dry maybe erase. not put it in his room. I don't know. <laughs> or not put it in his room. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So you have to play with what works for you and your family and your child, right? You know, if you have a space where they walk in, um, you know, every, every day after school, maybe that's a place for their calendar that they can see, you know, as they're walking out and they're walking in, or it just depends. Every, every family, every situation is different. And that's why organizing is so it's it's very personalized you know every client i work with is different every need that they have even if they're similar need but they're different spaces like so it's just it's it's very personalized you just ha- have to get a little creative and think of what works for you and your family i mean it makes me so happy i love thinking about organized things oh I'm it's, it's my love language here, yeah like, oh yeah yeah i home. it's all i think about yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is why we're soulmates yes um Okay, well, Angela, can you tell everybody where they can find you and if they are in the Dallas area where they can hire you and your podcast and all the things? Tell everybody everything. Sure. So my business is Your Space Reclaimed. I am located in Dallas and I'm actually kind of in Dallas, like I'm closer to downtown, but I do, I have a couple of clients in Plano, so I go up probably that far. Um, and then of course, East and West, I go a little bit. So that's, uh, and I love working with busy moms. Um, who are you know wanting to help set up systems organize their spaces a lot of physical spaces so that part is really fun and um my uh my website is yourspacereclaimed.net and then you can find me on instagram and facebook at uh your space reclaimed yeah so easy yeah so easy yeah oh and my podcast is called especially organized yeah so, that's so fun yeah. i'm i'm honored that you come spend time with us today. Oh, thank you. you. I love it. Thank you so much for having me. It's great.